Have you ever embarked on a journey so transformative, so deeply personal, that it felt like stepping into a whole new world? Imagine the moment you realize you're on the path of spiritual awakening, a journey not just about discovering the universe's hidden secrets, but about uncovering the layers of your very soul. This adventure promises enlightenment, inner peace, and a deeper understanding of life's mysteries. It's exhilarating, right? But here's something they don't always tell you up front. As you walk this path, you may find the landscape of your friendships shifting, sometimes leaving you wondering where all your friends have gone. You see, starting a spiritual awakening is like setting sail on uncharted waters. It's thrilling to navigate the depths of your consciousness, exploring beliefs and ideas that challenge the very fabric of your reality. However, this voyage often leads to an unexpected side effect. A sense of isolation as friends, once close, begin to drift away. It's a phenomenon that catches many off guard, stirring feelings of loneliness and confusion. You might even ask yourself, did I do something wrong? Or why does my growth seem to push people away? But here's the thing, and it's crucial to understand this early on. Losing friends during a spiritual awakening is not only common, it's a natural part of the process. It doesn't mean you've made a mistake or that you're heading in the wrong direction. Quite the opposite, actually. This part of your journey is about transformation and growth, shedding old skins and emerging anew. And just like any major life transition, it can affect your relationships in profound ways. So, why does this happen? Why do we sometimes lose friends as we awaken spiritually? It's a question that carries a lot of weight and nuance, and there's no one-size-fits-all answer. But throughout this exploration, we'll dive into the heart of these changes, uncovering the reasons behind the shifts in our friendships. From outgrowing old patterns to embracing our authentic selves, the journey of awakening is filled with lessons, not just about the universe, but about who we are and how we relate to those around us. As we embark on this discussion, remember, you're not alone. Many have walked this path before, feeling the sting of solitude, yet finding profound strength and connection on the other side. So, if you're ready to explore the deep and sometimes challenging aspects of spiritual awakening, keep watching. Together, we'll navigate the complexities of personal growth and the impact it has on our relationships, offering insights, reflections, and, most importantly, understanding. Let's dive in. 1. The Nature of Transformation Embarking on a spiritual awakening is akin to embarking on a journey of profound internal change. It's not just about adopting new habits or learning a few mindfulness tricks. It's about a fundamental shift in how we perceive ourselves and the world around us. Imagine waking up one day and seeing the colors of the world in a completely different you, hearing sounds with a new depth and feeling emotions with a heightened sensitivity. That's the level of transformation we're talking about here. It's intense, profound, and quite frankly, a bit disorienting at times. This metamorphosis can affect every aspect of your life, including your relationships. As you evolve, so do your interests, beliefs, and even your sense of humor. You might find yourself gravitating towards different activities or conversations, Ones that perhaps your current circle of friends doesn't engage in. It's like suddenly being into jazz when everyone around you is still rocking out to classic rock. There's nothing wrong with either preference, but the difference in tastes can create a distance that wasn't there before. Let's dive a bit deeper into this, shall we? As you undergo this spiritual awakening, you're not just changing you're evolving into a version of yourself that's more in tune with your inner essence. It's like peeling back layers of an onion, 
revealing the core of who you truly are. This process can be beautiful and liberating, but it can also mean that the people who are used to the outer layers might not recognize or resonate with the person you're becoming. It's not about one person being better or worse than the other. It's simply about change and growth. You see, as you start to see the world through this new lens, your priorities shift. The things that once seemed crucial to your happiness might now appear trivial. The jokes you once laughed at might not seem funny anymore because your sense of humor is evolving along with your perspective. It's a bit like growing out of a favorite childhood sweater. It served you well, it kept you warm, but now it just doesn't fit the way it used to. And here's an important thing to remember. It's natural for friendships to ebb and flow. People come into our lives for various reasons, and sometimes they leave when their part in our story is complete. It doesn't diminish the value of the connection you had. It simply means that life is in motion and change is a constant companion on this journey. So, as you navigate this transformation, it's crucial to approach it with an open heart and mind. It's okay to mourn the loss of friendships that no longer fit your evolving self, but it's also important to embrace the possibility of new connections that align with who you are becoming. The nature of transformation during a spiritual awakening is not a barrier to friendship, but a gateway to deeper, more meaningful connections. In this journey of awakening, remember, the caterpillar doesn't mourn the loss of its cocoon. Instead, it embraces its new wings. Similarly, as we unfold our wings through spiritual growth, we learn to appreciate the beauty of our transformation and the new horizons it brings to our relationships. 2. Evolving Interests and Values as we journey deeper into our spiritual awakening, it's like we're tuning into a different frequency. Our interests, values, and even the things we laugh about start to shift. It's a fascinating process, really, akin to rediscovering yourself from a new vantage point. You might find yourself suddenly intrigued by topics that never caught your attention before. Perhaps you're drawn to philosophy, spirituality, or the mysteries of the universe in ways that you can't seem to share with your old friends, who might still be preoccupied with more conventional interests. Think of it as if your personal playlist is changing. Once you and your friends dance to the same tunes, but now you're exploring new genres, new rhythms that resonate with your evolving self. It's not that your old favorites are no longer good, they just no longer fit the soundtrack of your life. This change in musical taste can naturally lead to a sense of disconnection from those who haven't tuned into the same frequency. It's like trying to share an exciting new song with someone who just doesn't get why it moves you so much. There's no fault here, it's just a matter of differing wavelengths. Let's dive into this a bit more. As you awaken spiritually, your beliefs and values begin to transform. You might start questioning societal norms, re-evaluating your career choices, or even reassessing what happiness means to you. This introspection and questioning can lead you down a path that feels incredibly rich and fulfilling, but it can also create a gap between you and those not on the same journey. It's similar to having discovered a new book that shifts your entire perspective, and when you try to discuss it with your friends, you realize they're not interested, or perhaps they don't understand why it's so transformative for you. And then there's humor, a subtle but significant aspect of our interactions. As your perspective changes, so does your sense of humor. What you find funny might evolve, and the jokes that once had you in stitches might no longer make you laugh. This isn't about developing a better sense of humor, but a different one that's in line with your new outlook on life. Humor often reflects our views on the world, and as these views change, 
so do the things we find amusing. Navigating this shift in interests and values can feel lonely, especially when you find yourself drifting away from friends with whom you shared so many laughs and memories. It's like walking a path that diverges from the familiar, stepping into the unknown with a mix of excitement and apprehension. But here's the silver lining. This journey opens up space for new friendships, for people who resonate with the person you're becoming. These connections can be incredibly enriching, offering conversations that dive deep and explore the very essence of life. It's important to remember, though, that losing touch with old friends isn't a reflection of failure. On their part or yours, it's a natural progression, a part of the growth process. 3. Authentic Self versus Social Masks Now let's delve into something a bit more intimate and, honestly, quite liberating. The journey towards becoming more authentic, more you, and how this crucial phase of your spiritual awakening influences your friendships. It's about the masks we wear, not the literal ones but those metaphorical masks crafted from societal expectations, norms, and the roles we play to fit in. Imagine, for years, wearing a mask so often that it almost feels like part of your face, molding to your skin, hiding the real you beneath layers of perceived necessity. Then, one day during your spiritual awakening, you start to peel it off, it might come off in pieces, slowly revealing the true you underneath. This process is exhilarating, but can also lead to unexpected shifts in your social life. Think about it. All this time, your friends have known the person with the mask. They've grown comfortable with that version of you, the one that laughs at the right moments, agrees with the group consensus, and never rocks the boat too much. But as you awaken spiritually, you find that authenticity becomes non-negotiable. You yearn to express your true thoughts, beliefs and feelings, even when they go against the grain. This authenticity is both liberating and challenging, especially when it comes to your friendships. As you embrace your authentic self, you might discover that some friends are uncomfortable or even disconnected from the person you truly are. It's like revealing that you've been wearing a costume this whole time, and now that you're showing your true self, not everyone knows how to relate to you. This shift can be startling, not just for you, but for those around you. It challenges the dynamics of your relationships, testing their foundations, are they based on genuine connection, or were they contingent on you playing a certain role? This authenticity also means that you no longer feel compelled to engage in activities or conversations that don't align with your values or interests. You might find yourself declining invitations to events that no longer feel meaningful, opting instead for solitude, or gatherings that nurture your soul. This change can be confusing for friends who expect you to continue participating as you always have. It's not that you love them any less. You're simply honoring your need for authenticity in how you spend your time and with whom. Losing friends during this phase of your awakening can feel like a loss, but it's also an important step towards self-discovery and forming deeper, more genuine relationships. It's a process of unmasking that reveals not only who you truly are, but also who your friends are at their core. Some relationships will withstand this test, growing stronger and more authentic, while others may fade away, making room for new connections that resonate with the real you. This journey towards authenticity is not about discarding people who don't immediately understand or accept the unmasked you. Instead, it's about giving yourself permission to be genuine and seeing which relationships evolve alongside you. It's about understanding that as you change, your social circle may change too, and that's okay. 
True friendships, those built on a foundation of mutual respect and understanding, will adapt and flourish in this new light. So, as we navigate the sometimes rocky terrain of shedding our social masks, let's remember the beauty in discovering our authentic selves and the freedom it brings. Yes, it might mean some friendships fade into the background, but it also opens the door to relationships that honor and celebrate the true you. 4. Clarification of True Friendships As we continue to navigate the transformative waters of our spiritual awakening, we arrive at a deeply insightful and somewhat introspective chapter, the clarification of true friendships. This phase of our journey is like turning on a light in a room that's been dim for too long, illuminating the true nature of the connections we've nurtured over the years. It's a moment of reckoning, of sorts, where we begin to see with crystal clarity which friendships are rooted in genuine affection and mutual growth, and which were perhaps more superficial or situational. During this awakening, as we peel away the layers of our own being and strive towards authenticity, we inadvertently apply a filter to our relationships. It's not a filter of judgment, but rather one of alignment. You start to ask yourself, do these connections support my growth? Do they resonate with the person I'm becoming? It's akin to sifting through an old box of photographs, reminiscing on the memories, but also recognizing that not all past connections have a place in your present, much less your future. This process of clarification can be bittersweet. On one hand, it can feel like a loss as we come to terms with the fact that some friendships might not withstand the test of our transformation. It's not unlike the changing of seasons, just as the lush vibrancy of summer gives way to the stark beauty of autumn, so too do our relationships undergo a natural evolution. Some leaves will cling to the branches a little longer, while others will drift away, making room for new growth. This shedding isn't a reflection of the value of those friendships, but rather an acknowledgement that their season in our lives may have come to an end. On the other hand, there's a profound beauty in the clarification of true friendships. These are the connections that not only withstand the seismic shifts of our awakening, but become stronger, deeper, and more meaningful. They are the friends who see us for who we truly are and celebrate our growth, even if it means we're no longer as similar as we once were. These relationships are treasures, rare and precious, marked by an unconditional acceptance and a shared journey of evolution. Embracing this phase of our spiritual awakening allows us to cultivate a garden of relationships that are truly nourishing. It teaches us the value of quality over quantity, reminding us that it's far more fulfilling to have a handful of genuine connections than a multitude of acquaintances who don't truly know us. This doesn't mean we close our hearts to those who drift away. Rather, we hold them in a space of gratitude for the role they've played in our journey, knowing that each person who crosses our path serves a purpose, however transient. The clarification of true friendships is a testament to the power of authenticity. It challenges us to be real, both with ourselves and with others, and it rewards us with connections that resonate with our deepest truths. It's a reminder that true friendship isn't about always agreeing or sharing every interest, but about supporting each other's growth and valuing each other's essence. 5. Solitude and Self-Discovery In this next chapter of our journey, let's explore a concept that becomes incredibly precious during spiritual awakening solitude. Now, solitude often gets a bad rap, conjuring images of loneliness or isolation. But in the context of spiritual awakening, solitude is not about loneliness. It's about making a conscious choice to step back, to immerse yourself in the quiet, to truly listen to your own voice, 
without the cacophony of the world drowning it out. It's in these moments of quietude that some of the most profound self-discovery happens. Imagine for a moment that solitude is like taking a solo voyage across a vast, beautiful ocean. The waters are the depths of your inner self, unexplored and brimming with potential. At first, the idea might seem daunting, even a bit scary. You're leaving the safety of the shore, where the voices and presence of others are a constant. But as you venture further, you begin to appreciate the peace, the space to think, to breathe, to be. You start to enjoy the rhythm of your own heartbeat, the flow of your thoughts, and the whispers of your deepest desires. This is the essence of solitude during spiritual awakening, a journey within, to the core of who you are. As we embrace solitude, we often find our relationships shifting. This isn't because we've suddenly become hermits, shunning all social interaction. Rather, it's because we're becoming more selective about how we spend our time and with whom. You might notice that the appeal of large gatherings or superficial chit-chat fades, replaced by a craving for more meaningful, soulful connections. This doesn't mean you love your friends any less. It simply means you're honoring your need for depth, both in your personal reflections and in your relationships. Solitude also allows for a type of self-care and healing that's hard to achieve in the constant presence of others. It's like giving yourself a quiet sanctuary where you can heal, grow, and rejuvenate. In these quiet moments, you might find yourself working through past traumas, forgiving yourself and others, and cultivating a deeper sense of self-love and acceptance. This process can be incredibly liberating, shedding layers of pain, regret, or self-doubt that you've been carrying, perhaps without even realizing it. This phase of solitude and self-discovery can also lead to an evolution in the types of friendships you seek and maintain. You begin to value friends who understand and respect your need for solitude, who support your journey of self-discovery, and who are there to share in the deep, meaningful conversations that now light your soul on fire. These friendships become less about filling silence or ensuring constant companionship, and more about mutual growth understanding, and the sharing of inner worlds. As we navigate the beautiful, sometimes challenging path of spiritual awakening, let's reframe our understanding of solitude. Let's see it not as a period of loneliness, but as a sacred space for growth, healing, and profound self-discovery. It's in these quiet moments alone that we often hear the most important messages from our soul, guiding us towards our truest selves. And as we emerge from these periods of solitude, we do so with a deeper sense of who we are and what we value, ready to engage with the world and our friendships on a much more authentic and meaningful level. So, if you find yourself craving solitude on your spiritual journey, embrace it. See it as an invitation to dive deep, to discover the treasures hidden within, and to emerge with a clearer understanding of your path. 6. Quality over quantity in relationships As we continue to navigate the ebbs and flows of spiritual awakening, there comes a pivotal moment when our perspective on relationships undergoes a significant transformation. This isn't just about the friends we've lost or the solitude we've embraced. It's about a profound realization that begins to take root within us. The importance of quality over quantity in our relationships. Let's unpack this, shall we? In the early stages of our journey, it's not uncommon to place a high value on the number of friends and social interactions we have. There's a certain comfort in numbers, a sense of belonging that comes from being surrounded by many people. But as we delve deeper into our spiritual awakening, our priorities begin to shift. We start to seek more meaningful, soulful connections that offer depth and genuine understanding. 
It's like we've been dining at a buffet of superficial interactions, and suddenly we crave a more nourishing, fulfilling meal, the kind that feeds not just the body, but the soul. This shift towards valuing quality over quantity in our relationships doesn't happen overnight. It's a gradual process, often sparked by those moments of solitude and self-discovery we've talked about. As we spend more time reflecting on what truly matters to us, we begin to see our friendships through a new lens. We ask ourselves, do these relationships support my growth? Do they reflect my values? Are they rooted in mutual respect and understanding? It's here, in these moments of introspection, that we realize the true worth of deep, authentic connections. We understand that having a few genuine friends with whom we can share our deepest thoughts, fears and dreams is infinitely more valuable than maintaining a wide circle of acquaintances. These quality relationships become our sanctuary, a space where we can be our true selves without masks or pretenses. They offer a level of empathy, support and love that is both rare and precious. But here's the thing about choosing quality over quantity. It requires courage. It means being willing to let go of relationships that no longer serve our highest good, even if it means our social circle shrinks. It involves stepping into the vulnerability of authentic connection, where we show up as our true selves, imperfections and all. This can be daunting, but it's also incredibly freeing. It's a declaration that we value ourselves enough to choose friendships that uplift and inspire us, that challenge us to grow and become the best versions of ourselves. This transformation in how we view relationships is a testament to our growth on this spiritual journey. It's a sign that we're moving towards a life that is more aligned with our authentic selves, one where the connections we foster are based on true affinity and shared journeys. It's about understanding that the richness of our lives is not measured by the quantity of our interactions, but by the quality of the connections we nurture. So, as we embrace this shift towards quality over quantity in our relationships, let's do so with open hearts and minds. Let's cherish the deep, meaningful connections we have and remain open to new friendships that resonate with our evolving selves. Remember, each relationship, no matter how brief or long-lasting, teaches us something valuable. It's all part of the beautiful tapestry of our lives, woven together with threads of experiences and connections that shape who we are and who we're becoming. In the end, choosing quality over quantity isn't about isolation or exclusivity. It's about intentionality. It's a conscious decision to invest our time and energy into relationships that matter, that feed our souls, and that reflect the light of our true selves. As we reach the end of our exploration into why we sometimes lose friends during spiritual awakening, it's important to pause and reflect on the ground we've covered. This journey, filled with its ups and downs, its moments of solitude, and its profound realizations about the nature of true friendship is a deeply transformative experience. It's akin to navigating a vast, uncharted territory within ourselves, discovering hidden treasures of insight and understanding along the way. Throughout this journey, we've delved into the essence of personal transformation, the evolution of our interests and values, the unveiling of our authentic selves, the clarification of true friendships, the sacredness of solitude, and the paramount importance of quality over quantity in our relationships. Each of these revelations brings with it a layer of complexity and beauty to our spiritual awakening, painting a picture of growth that is both challenging and rewarding. It's crucial to remember that losing friends or experiencing shifts in our social circles is not an indication of failure or rejection. Rather, it's a sign of our evolving self, 
a testament to the depth of our journey into spiritual awakening. Like leaves that fall away in autumn to make room for new growth in the spring, these changes in our relationships are natural, necessary, and ultimately enriching. They pave the way for deeper connections, more authentic interactions, and friendships that resonate with our truest selves. This journey of awakening is not one we walk alone, even if it might feel that way at times. It's a path shared by many, each of us navigating our own unique routes, but all moving towards a greater understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. The solitude we embrace, the authenticity we strive for, and the discernment we apply in our relationships are all steps towards finding a more fulfilling, connected and vibrant life. As we wrap up this discussion, let's carry forward the lessons we've learned with grace and compassion. Let's approach our existing and future friendships with an open heart, cherishing the depth and quality of these connections over their quantity. Let's continue to embrace our moments of solitude as opportunities for self-discovery and growth. And most importantly, let's remain true to ourselves, honoring our journey of spiritual awakening with courage, curiosity, and an unwavering commitment to authenticity. In closing, I invite you to reflect on your own journey, the friendships that have evolved or faded, and the new connections that have come to light. Remember, each person who crosses our path has a role to play in our story, just as we have in theirs. Cherish these interactions, learn from them, and let them guide you towards becoming the most authentic version of yourself. Thank you for joining me on this exploration. If this discussion resonated with you, I encourage you to like, share, and subscribe for more content aimed at nurturing your spirit and guiding you along your path of personal growth. Your journey is unique, your experience is valid, and your presence in this world deeply significant. Keep walking your path with confidence, knowing that each step forward is a step towards a more awakened, authentic, and connected life.